Hi, <laughs> I have a surprise for you, and I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, oh, let me grab my iPad. I forgot to write down notes of what to talk about. I mean, aside from the obvious baby geese, um, had some, I know, crazy interactions on Facebook this week, <laughs> and, uh, well, I hope people come in, but I'm really excited to show you something because I set something up so you could see something. And anyway, nobody's here <laughs> and I'm really excited, but I'm really warm too. Today is about, I don't know, it's like 90 degrees. Um, earlier today, I went ahead and gave Goldenrod, which is my newest colony that I posted a video about this week um, where I merged two four frame queenless <laughs> um, splits into one hive and like just spoiler alert it was a success and anyway I gave them another box today and gave them a feeder Hey, hot mess on a mission. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so I have, I have, I have, have a surprise for everybody, and I'm really excited. And I know there's like only two people here, but it's cool. Uh, look, <laughs> look who's here. Let's see. Or let me unmute them. Let me figure out how. Oh, I have it. Okay, I have them muted on the iPad over there. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but they're probably not, you know, making a lot of noise at this very second. But um, I got excited and I wanted to, like, I have my iPad in there. It may die at any moment, to be honest. <laughs> And so I just wanted you guys to see my little bitties. Look at them. They're so funny when they run around with their wings out. It's so funny. And I think they can see themselves too, which is pretty funny as well. So hi, little homestead in the forest. It has been ages. I know you've been busy, busy. Hi, Tina. Hey, Skinner Farms. It's nice to see everybody. Unfortunately, I accidentally have them on mute on the iPad, which is in the brooder with them. <laughs> but they, they look like they're yelling right now. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> I wonder if they can hear me. I couldn't turn the sound off all the way. Oh, golly. But I thought you guys would like to see them. Um, I just got them yesterday, and they are supposed they're supposed to be African geese, and I'm really excited. Um, we're working on replacing our current geese because they're jerks, and they're injuring one of our ducks. Right now, they are separated, but um, oh, I'm so warm. I got nervous because I'm doing something new. <laughs> um, right now, the geese are separated, and which is fine, but as soon as, <laughs> I can't figure out, as soon as these babies are big enough to go out with the ducks, they will, um, they should go out with them and hopefully, you know, they'll grow up to be um, like friendly with all of the ducks. Cause we brought in Donnie, the Drake, he's a Cayuga. We brought him in, um, last spring and the goose the boy goose just would not get used to him at all he was like super jelly that that donnie was getting action from ducks and the goose was no longer maybe i don't know but um <laughs> but african geese can like i think i read that the males get to like 22 pounds and that's huge but i'm really excited um, I always kind of like steered clear of the geese with the knobs, but I saw like these as adults as a picture and I was like, oh, that's, that's super cute. Or I think they look interesting. They have like this, like hangy downy underneath their beaks. 
or bills. And um, yeah, I think like, I think there's a possibility of any male to get mean, but I mean, I know they're always mean during mating season and I can, I can handle that. And actually like the geese are kind of dancing uh, cause they don't bother him at all. <clears throat> but for me, um, the goose, the gander, actually, the gander comes after me. Um, and, and I've been dealing with that. This is, <clears throat> we've had them for four years now. And um, they're, they're not getting like nicer. I was like, I brought you into this world. Uh, hello, why are you being awful? And <laughs> I, I just don't understand why they're like that. But um, I'm just mostly like, I don't really care if the geese are kind of mean to people. Like, um, as long as they're like, not like always coming after me, like I can go in the pen and the goose will usually, or the gander will usually leave me alone. But, um, brain fart. But, so if I couldn't do that, then it would be no, no, not okay. But, as long as I can like interact with them and not get attacked all the time, that's fine. But mostly we just don't want them hurting the ducks. And it's really unfortunate because they, the gander pulled all of Donnie's uh, feathers out of his like upper back. And it was, it was sad, but they're all, gr they're growing back now. And so that's good. You had a beware of goose geese sign at your house as a kid. <laughs> That's funny. Look, there's still his little butt. They're really cute. Um, we are trying to make them friendly by with mandatory cuddle time. <laughs> so last night we brought them out. We well, we put Benji in his kennel. You know, Benji the cat. We put him in his kennel and um and then we brought the baby geese out and cuddled for about a half an hour. It's like, okay, well, hopefully, you know, some cuddles will make you friendly. Or like, I, I hung out with the geese and the ducks when I got them before, but the geese still turned out awful. <laughs> they they were so nice until um, until they hit goose puberty. <laughs> So anyway, that's the biggest thing that's happened for us this week. Um, other than I was kind of touching on it before anyone came in, I had like a crazy interaction on Facebook due to my recent video. And um, it was it was um, <clears throat> kind of awful, but also like I learned a lesson from it. I made the mistake in my latest video of not talking about like the backstory. Um, I forgot to say, you know, watch my previous videos so you can get like the backstory and why I'm doing this and what am I doing? Uh, because I had a bunch of people assume that I was putting two um, queen right colonies together into one hive. And that's absolutely not what I was doing. They were, they were totally queenless. And um, the premise of the whole experiment, and, and this is really awesome. It really is. Okay. So <sighs> experimenting is like my life force. Like you can't get me to stop. So like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And um, that's just who I am and what I do. So <clears throat> People don't like that. People don't like when you do new things or different things very much, especially in beekeeping. And that's fine. But um, <coughs> but oh, sorry. The premise of the experiment, that's what I was saying, was to since you can take brood frames from one colony with with nurse bees on it and distribute that col that frame to another colony and everything's fine. My thought process was, why can't I build a larger colony using brood frames from two different colonies that I need to split anyway, because they're getting really populated. Um, and I, you know, I, I've talked about it in quite a few of my videos because it's been, you know, in the works for a while, you know, it's kind of like a longer term, um, experiment and so um 
I can't remember where I was going. Oh, so I'm learning how to like distribute that over multiple videos. And so anyway, the big mistake that I made in that video was failing to mention that those colonies were actually queenless and like the whole premise of the experiment in general. And now I know that I need to mention um, like every step because I kind of like for when I was making the video, I forgot that most of your viewers here on YouTube are, are not people who like religiously watch every video. So so the new people who come, they don't know what's happening. And unfortunately, most people would like to assume that you don't know what you're doing. And and I guess the video, like I could say that I didn't know what I was doing in some of it. And um, it was because there was some robbing going on because we were in a really bad drought. There was some robbing going on and I'm pretty I'm pretty convinced that it was robbing. Um, some people say that it's not, but it was just like a feeling that I had inside that I think it was. And so that was happening during the video. And like, I didn't, I didn't know what to do besides just keep going. And so that's what I did. But all in all, like, even though I had talked to these other people who were giving me a real hard time, I told them, you know, this whole thing was a success and then they called me a liar and then it was a fluke and that it couldn't possibly be true and I was just trying to explain that you know this is my YouTube channel and my whole premise is like you you guys have to trust that I'm being honest with you and that's that's the whole that's the whole thing like you guys have to trust that I'm being honest with you and I always am. And, you know, I share a lot of stuff with you guys. And um, I just hope that you know that everything I do, if, if that experiment failed, I would be like, oh shit, that did not work. Okay, don't do that, but it worked. And now we have a beautiful colony and I just gave them another brood chamber. And so anyway, it was a thing and it was hardcore. And hey, Tim, same thing happened to you the first time you experienced robbing. What same thing? You got ate up by other beekeepers? I see. I accidentally have them on mute in my iPad in the bathroom, so I'd have to leave. But there's only one person here, so I can go do that since you're, since you're asking. I just have to unmute them. I accidentally pressed the button. Can you hear them now? <laughs> Sorry, I disappeared. Let's see. Can you guys hear them now? Right? Yes. That's exactly like, that wasn't the first time I experienced robbing, but that was the first time, you know, it was happening like while I was doing something. And I wasn't sure actually if it was, um, wasn't sure. Let me know if they're loud because I can't hear anything on this end because I didn't want like um, mic noise. Oh, oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was the first time it was happening to me while I was, like, actually actively, like, doing something. And I couldn't imagine um, a better process for it. So, I mean, someone said I should have stopped it. And then um, before I did the whole combined thing. And at the time, that didn't seem like something I could do. And... So I did what I thought was best at the time with the information I had, which is all we can do. And I decided to go ahead and do the combine and then work on the robbing after. And I did. And 
um, actually later that evening, we ended up moving the colony about 75 feet away in case, um, in case the ro robbers came back the next day. So it would kind of confuse them. Like it wasn't guaranteeing anything, but um, it was, you know, something you could do that didn't cost anything but a few minutes and uh, um, might as well do something, you know, if you can. So, but in any case, it doesn't, no, in any case, the whole moral of the story of this whole interaction that I had on Facebook and stuff is that I need to do a better job at remembering to say the process of what I'm doing in the video and what I have done already. So like the backstory and that it was experiment and everything. But yeah, so, um, hey, how are you? These are my, my new members of the family. They're little geese. They're African geese. Um, and they're super cute. Look at their little butts, little fluff butts. Well, thanks. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. Although I like wasn't sure how to take your comment because you're like, this is like watching a soap opera. And it kind of was because it was really dramatic. And like, I was really upset about the whole thing. Later that night, I called. Um, so like the thing is, when I experiment, I, I talk it over with other experienced beekeepers. And no one had any um, objection to my experiment. They're like, that should work you know, in theory, that should absolutely work. And so I was like, okay, I'm going for it. I'm going to do it. And um, <clears throat> so like, I, I, you know, I vet my process. I don't do hardly anything ever willy nilly. Like I always double check and talk to somebody else about it. But later that night, um, I, I called, a local beekeeper. Well, he's a couple hours away, but he's a, a commercial beekeeper and he's a real nice guy and he's uh, real friendly and everything. And, and so I called him and I was like, I'm really upset. I don't know what's going on. I need your help. <laughs> and he's like, you know what, Adrian, if you didn't react this way about your bees, I would be really um, worried <laughs> because I can tell by your reaction that you love your bees and that um and you know what he said i have a breakdown emotional breakdown at least once a year with my bees <laughs> and he's like it's because we care about them and it's true i do like they're a little bit easier to um bring back the emotions compared to like your uh, fluffy or furry friends but i do always want to do the right thing by them and I will always tell you if I mess something up. <laughs> yeah, teach and inspect all day long. I really like, um, I like experimenting and that's not something I will ever stop. I have another experiment in the works. Um, I'm waiting on equipment to get here actually now and I need to paint it. Heck yeah. <laughs> he does all the stuff for free, too. <laughs> oh, shoot. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I have another experiment in the works. I'm not going to divulge that quite yet. I've talked to a couple people about it, and I've done some research, of course, because that's what I do. I'm a research freak. It's a thing that I do. And um, I'm pretty excited. And so I'm waiting on new equipment to come, and I'll have to paint it, and then I'll be making some small splits. And we'll see how it goes. And I'm really excited because, like, the whole big part of the experiment will be happening next year, unfortunately. But I needed to get something. I needed to make more colonies for this year, for next year. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's that's a thing. And, and I'll never stop. I'll never stop experimenting. When I first started beekeeping, you know, I actually – I got started – wanting beekeeping because of the flow hive and I'll freely admit that and it's a tool and it's fine it's just like a Langstroth except for the super so that's just that there's end of story that's what got me interested in the idea of beekeeping and that was when 
I lived in Germany in 2014 and we had some, it was really expensive, the, the flow hive. So we had some friends or some friends and family helped us pay for it. And I actually didn't get the flow hive until late, like mid 2015 when we we're finally back in the States. But aside the point, um, I, I love honey and I got like addicted to honey and the like, good honey in Germany. And I was like, I want to beekeep for honey. That That is my purpose for beekeeping other than I get to learn a lot. And um, it's very rewarding beekeeping. It's not for everybody, but it's super rewarding. Um, and of course, you know, I didn't start actually beekeeping until 2018, but I took that time from being interested until 2018. I researched on my own. I went like online courses. In 2018, I was accepted into the Oregon State Master Beekeeping Program. And so I did the apprenticeship of that. And I'm going to take hopefully the journey final exam um, this July um, at the end of the month, hopefully. And so, and then I'll be done. I'm not going to go on to master because it's about like research projects and stuff. And I just not like, I like researching, but I don't want to like put it into like a paper or I also hate reading like scholarly articles. Why not take the queen and a few frames of brood and bees from the new split hive and simulate a swarm? Why would I do that? Though, I don't want to split them. They're a brand new colony. But when I make splits, I just want to keep the queen in the same one. I don't know why. But it doesn't really matter, to be honest, whatever you do. I think next year, maybe I'll try doing um, the swarm simulation. I mean, I don't see an issue in that, but it's just been the way that I've always done it, just to let them make. Did you not see my reply to your comment? They're actually geese, baby geese. <clears throat> um, but you actually asked me that when I was making the splits. And the point, the reason I did that is because I didn't, I wanted to merge the two. Uh, splits together and you can't have a queen when you do that so because that was part of the experiment um, but whenever I've done splits I just leave the queen in the original colony it's easier for me to keep track in addition like I always find the queen like I haven't had an issue yet where I haven't found her um, um, and yeah, it's just easier for me to keep track when they stay in their original hives. Like, it's not an absolute requirement or anything, and you figure it out, I guess. But I like um, when you make a split and you want them to make their own queen, uh, when you go through that colony, the new colony now that only has five frames instead of um, 8, 12, eight, 16. 24 plus frames. So going through five frames to find, to make sure that they made a new queen and stuff is a lot easier than going through 24 frames for me because I have, you know, I use all mediums in most of my colonies. Um, so I have more frames to go through to find the queen. But yeah, but that's just what I've always done. And if anything happens to that new split, then you're just out, you know, five frames of bees. I guess that wouldn't wouldn't matter doing a, a swarm simulation either. But I just haven't done that. I don't think it really matters either way. But you can imagine it's very rewarding. You buy honey off a local beekeeper. That's awesome. I would I would like to try Australian honey. I mean, I'm sure it's good. <laughs> Can't chat, work late, so driving home. Okay, Emma. And we have Sandy and we have Bruce, who is, you know, the poor recipient of me calling him anytime I'm worried about bee stuff now. <laughs> 
but he says he doesn't mind. Did I say hi, Sandy? I meant to. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's a thing. And that new colony, you guys, is doing so good. And I just I just inspected um, on Wednesday, day before yesterday, Wednesday, and the new queen is beautiful. Okay, beautiful. And I marked her. It was so funny when you mark queens. I don't know if any of you, well, any of you, the beekeepers here have, have marked um, and noticed when, <laughs> when I mark her and then you like let her loose a little bit, you know, and she's still in there. She like always puts her back leg up, like straight up in the air. And it's really funny to me. I don't know. It's just like just one leg, just straight up in the air. <laughs> Anti-treatment beekeeper friend. He actually just did um, a talk with his local bee club, and um, I was really impressed with how receptive they were. But it kind of sounded like um, it sounded like most people there were treatment free anyway, or they just um, or they just didn't speak up really about it. But it seemed like they were really receptive and they had good questions. I couldn't really hear them. So by the way, Bruce, if you do that, don't forget to reiterate questions. Cause that also helps the people in the audience as well, but I couldn't hear the questions. Um, but, but I got to watch it live. <laughs> Cause I, I asked, can I watch please? <laughs> and um, I was impressed with, with, with your bee club, like in general. And I thought it was nice. And so, yeah, we also finally, as you know, we got the raised bed made last weekend and yesterday, <sighs> of course, afterwards, always, always think of it afterwards. But you did great. You were confident. You didn't seem very nervous or anything. So it was, it was easy to listen to. And, um, oh, so we got the raised bed made last weekend. Right? I think so. Oh, bye, Tam. And then um, yesterday I finally put... <laughs> Sorry, I was watching the little geese. <laughs> I finally put the, like, some stumps in there. And then some other, like, various, like, pieces of wood and some shrubbery. I didn't know you were a beekeeper, Sandy. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so yesterday evening, we finally took the time to fill it most way full, like, well, about halfway full with donkey poo. And then probably this weekend or something, I'll, I'll get a good soil from locally. I didn't know you had beehives at all. <laughs> but I don't care if people treat or don't treat. I, I personally treat when I feel like I need to. And um, I think there's a lot of correct ways to keep bees. And I think we can all be friends about it. Hello, Bridget. Bridget. Like my little, this way, this way. My little fluffy buddy geese over here. We just got them yesterday. And I had been calling that feed store Wilco locally because I asked a couple months ago, um, well, the other month, I asked, are you getting geese in? And they said, um, they said that they were coming in on June 16th. So I called on Wednesday morning, and they're like, no, they didn't come in. And then I called on Thursday morning, and they're like, no, they didn't come in, but they might come in this afternoon. And I was like, well, what time should I call? Because <laughs> I live about a half hour away. All right. See ya. See ya, Nettie. Um, and so I called at four and she's like, yeah, we got the geese in. And I was like, do you have any with black beaks? Because I'm specifically looking for a breed. She's like, let me go check. She seemed really like exasperated at me <laughs> at that very point in time. It's probably busy. And then, um, 
And she's like, yeah, we have some with black beaks. And I was like, oh, great. I'll be there, you know, in like in half an hour. She's like, I can't hold them for you. And I'm like, fine, that's fine. I'll just be there in a half hour, okay? All right. Um, I'll just be there in half hour. And if you could like tell people not to get them, that would be great. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And so I went in and uh, picked out the babies. And I learned when I was researching um, – the little geese, I was, I found out that the breed Toulouse, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that breed and then the African breed, they look almost exactly the same as babies. And um, the thing that I read at the time was that the down, this way, the down, so the yellow part on them, um, well, all of it is down, but the yellow down on them for African geese would be a little bit more gray than side by side with the Toulouse geese, um, which would be more yellow. But these all just look yellow <laughs> together. And um, I was like, oh man, I don't know. Of course I didn't read the whole thing. Look at them little run with their little wings. Oh my God. Okay. Um, of course I didn't like have time to read the whole thing. Cause I was like, I didn't want my like little geese to get bought. So, um, I only read that bit of information. And then for, um, upon further reading, I read that the a better way to figure out the breed was by um, the shape of their bills where it meets their face. And if it goes up like they, like they have, um, if it goes up like this, it's an African. But if it goes down like concave versus convex, if it goes concave down, it's um, a Toulouse and these all have you know the con convex and so yay I, I mean I'm pretty certain by that information which was from Metzer Farms so their hatchery um, um, and so I was like okay well they probably have pretty accurate information <laughs> um, well I think I, I've told you I've told people before but my current geese are jerks and so we're replacing them because they're hurting um, Donnie the Drake. And we want actually the ducks and the geese together. And right now our current geese that are four years old are just getting more mean actually. And um, yeah, it's not fun when they're mean. Like they're fine with Dan, but they're really awful for me. And just tell me if the geese are loud because I – I can't hear it on my end because I didn't want any like echo. So let me know. <laughs> Cause uh, Tim asked me to turn the volume on them up. So I did. And so, um, so yeah, so basically we're just replacing our current geese um, with a breed that I read has like a mild temperament um, obviously, that can be different for, like, every goose. Um, but in general, the African geese are mild temperament, and they're loud. And the reason I have geese to begin with, other than, like, I kind of just wanted them to see, um, was that I believe their annoying loudness is a really good predator deterrent. And I'm not saying that's a guarantee. I'm not saying that they... Um, are protectors because they're not really, they're, they're, they're also prey. So um, I just think that them being loud asses <laughs> is a benefit to the farm um, because we haven't um, lost, we've lost only one chicken to a predator. Um, and that was the same year I got them in 2017. And yeah, so that's just my experience, experience, no guarantees, but that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking because they're so loud and annoying that, um, that the predators are like not interested as much. <laughs> just my theory. I don't have any proof. I'm using, um, a Brincia heat plate uh, for the first time. I bought two of them because I'm working on hatching quail too. Um, so that'll be fun. 
Oh, I could hear them out here. Uh, but with the heat lamps, as, as most of you know, there is a fire danger with the heat lamps. Most people don't have an issue, but they're whistling at you right on. <laughs> uh, nice to see you, Wanted Mobile Gaming. Um, what was I saying? Shoot. What was I saying? Criminies. Brain fart. I don't remember at all. So uh, they're in, oh, oh, right, the heat plate. So this is the first time I'm using, oh. So I went from the heat plate to the fire dangers and heat lamps. Um, so every year out here, every winter, um, people lose their houses and chicken coops and chickens due to fires from heat lamps. And so, so, the first couple of years, I had no issue and in, in just using the heat lamps, and it was fine. And I made it to where, you know, um, I, I have a stand for them, and I even attached a um, smoke detector. But, you know, the last time I used it, my anxiety is getting worse as I get older. And the last time I used it, I, like didn't want to leave the house. I was seriously afraid my whole house was going to go up in a fire. And I, um, here in central Oregon, where I live, um, we're in the high desert and we're already in a drought. It's the worst drought in like 127 years. So the fire danger is naturally high, obviously. I mean, higher than usual because, you know, we have had a lot less rain. But, so I don't want to contribute to that. So, I think the only answer for me was either letting broody hens hatch things or get a heat plate. So I finally um, caved in and I bought two heat plates. And uh, so far, so good. We've only obviously used it since yesterday. They're about 60 bucks. They're about 60 bucks on Amazon. Oh, I should link that somewhere. Um, and... They're, it's not the worst. Like, I was really worried. I was really worried last night that the geese weren't going to stay under it or realize that it was, like, the heat source. And I saw Pixel Pia come in. Hi, Pia. Where are you at, Juan and Mobile? Um, nope, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> anyway <laughs> oh I was really worried that they wouldn't go under it and wouldn't realize because it was my first experience using them and it was so funny when <laughs> we turned off the light last night and they just started yelling loud they were just yelling and yelling and yelling we're like oh my gosh what is happening i mean this is not our first time brooding okay but it was just like the first time we've used the heat plates and i was like okay so i went in there and they weren't standing under they were like trying to crawl on top of the heat plate and i'm like what are you doing so i'm like shoving these <laughs> okay it's not shoving what kind of shoving in a nice way shoving them underneath the heat plate so that they'd realize that's where it's warm um because they were like oh my gosh we can't see anything <laughs> And so I like went in there and like repeatedly shoved them under until they stopped freaking out. And they were like sat there and I was like, okay, now it's time to like leave the room and go. And that was like a whole process that we had to do like two or three times. And it was, it was kind of funny. Excuse me. I never had to do that before. And I uh, was surprised that I had to do that because they were under it previously during the day and so they were just freaked out I think because it got dark so <laughs> it was kind of funny and we had good you know mandatory cuddles which I'm hoping helps them stay friendly they, they don't really like struggle to get away oh You stop for alcohol while she's already uh, had been drinking. I see. I see. <laughs> Hope you're well. Love the heat plate. Yes. I'm, I'm happy so far to be using them now. You know, one night 
under the belt with the heat plates and it went fine. I was, I was really worried when I woke up this morning, I was like, damn, did you check the babies? Are they still all alive? And he's like, yes. I was like, okay. And then he brought me Benji the cat, you know, and, and then we cuddled Benji and then, and then Benji left and then Dan was giving him a hard time because Benji should cuddle more. It would be nice. And, and I was like, I bet the geese would cuddle. <laughs> He's like, I'm not bringing you geese in bed. That's ridiculous. I thought it would be nice. <laughs> but yeah. What do you say? This is my tired part of the day. Careful, you're going to get yourself kicked off the platform talking like that. Um, what, it, what kind of calves, cows do you have, um, Skinner Farms? But, yeah, so I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really excited about the geese. It's nice to like get, you know, new baby life in um, the farm to like reinvigorate you when you're feeling kind of blah about things. And I have been, I realized today I've been so unusually uh, depressed that I didn't realize my roses were, my other roses were blooming. And that's like, that is a, a like a big deal <laughs> to me. I was like, wow, I've been really out of it for a while. And um, I think, I think things are coming around ish. Let's hope. Night, Sandy. Chicken salad sounds good. I don't think we have enough chicken. <laughs> Black Angus, a Jersey and a belted Angus cross. Or is that what they all are? Um, no, probably not. It's actually just my iPad sitting in there now, but I considered it, but I'm, I, I wouldn't do it at nighttime because they'll just, they just sit under the heat plate. It might be an okay idea. I, I, I considered doing a little bit of it. I don't know when a good time would be. Maybe... Maybe in the evenings. Because they're pretty cute. But sometimes they go, I'd have to plug in my iPad for sure. And maybe cover it with plastic wrap. <laughs> because they kind of projectile poo. <laughs> well, that's actually a good idea. That might, I'll think about it. But we won't build. So they're actually like in our guest bathroom because that's like the only place we had with like an available um plug-in and so we like wouldn't be able to use the bathroom <laughs> three angus cross one jersey oh okay the steer you had butcher was a jersey cross with brahma i didn't know there was brahma um cows too which is kind of funny because there's like brahma chickens and i wonder if it's like they're like discovered by the same person or something <laughs> it'll be fun to watch the babies you know grow up and everything man i'm like i hope that they stay nice because they're gonna be big they're gonna be like 22 pounds of goose <laughs> and the reason why I got three is so hopefully I got three I always get three of one breed or more and um Joe Brahma <laughs> was that supposed to be a joke because it kind of made me laugh I don't know <laughs> so I always get three of a breed and that is in case one dies, then there's not just one lonely baby left over. And did you see it poop? It just pooed. 
Um, <laughs> and hopefully having a better chance of having a, at least one girl. Um, last time I got geese. I'm glad you liked it, Pia. Thanks for coming. I could use dinner. I'm hungry. I didn't eat lunch. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I had like two pieces of bread before I started the stream. <laughs> um, oh, when I got my other geese, I got three and um, actually it was supposed to be two girls and a boy. And I ended up with two boys and a girl and oh, it was kind of funny, but um. When the one died, well, we had to put him down because he hurt himself really bad. Um, but when he died, then we weren't left with just one lonely goose. Because I have heard, I haven't experienced this myself, but like waterfowl, it seems like from what I've heard, like especially ducks, they get really attached to their flock. Like if they just had like two friends and one died, they like get depressed and they like die of broken hearts and stuff. And I just was like, I could never have that happen. <laughs> so that's why I always get at least three um, of the same breed, especially like with chickens, because while you are pulling from a pullet bin, there's a 10% chance. And this is like well known. There's a 10% chance or something that you'll get a rooster because, you know, um, they're sexed by humans and humans make errors. So there's always a chance that you're going to get a boy. And so I always get three chickens of the same breed in case one's a rooster <laughs> and in case one dies. <laughs> it was just my backup thing. And so that's why I have three of most things, unless two of them died. And when I bought, when I actually only got one at a time or two at a time, uh, the one I got just one at that time turned out to be a boy. That was a, an Easter acre. And then when I got two of the same breed, only one turned out to be a boy and one turned out to be a girl. And that's the only time this happened to me. And when I got three, except for the geese, when I got three of the same <laughs> They all turn out to be girls. So I don't know. I'll just keep up with it. And I think I think the hatcheries that my local feed stores order from are pretty decent at sexing. Uh, people don't tend to agree with me on that. I don't know why. But apparently they get the leftovers or something that happen to be Brewsters. <laughs> but yeah. So what are you guys up to this week? What was something you've done that you're proud of? Hey, Empty Homestead. I've been sharing about my geese. You'll have to watch from the beginning. I talked about some bee drama that I had. And then my little bitty baby geese. They're adorable. And so it'll be exciting to watch them grow. Hey, Jason. Hope you're well. Maybe I'll have to start my streams at like 3.30 or something. Because it seems like no one comes in until 3.30 anymore. But. <laughs> but yeah. So the little baby baby geese are our newest addition. <laughs> and I'm. I'm excited. They're Africans. I hope. Um, breed called Africans and they're going to be like 22 pounds and it's going to be awesome and scary because hopefully they'll stay nice. I don't know, <laughs> but they're, they so far um, are pretty cute. I had a different waterer in there for them, but it was too big and um, they kept jumping into it. And so I had to take it out because the geese babies um, without a mama, they uh, can't really get too wet because they'll get waterlogged because they don't have the preening. Their preening glands aren't quite working yet. And they don't know that they need to, you know, use their preening glands, which has, which has an oil, um, to spread over their feathers. 
so that they're floaty instead of sinky. <laughs> So they can float for a little while, but they end up getting waterlogged and you don't want them like to go through such um, drastic temperature changes. So I was like, I got to take out that waterer. And um, this one is just temporary until I figure out a better solution. Um, previously in a different brooder I had, I had holes in the walls of it um, so that I could attach water to the side so that I could give them a deeper water because with ducks and geese you want them to have a little bit deeper water so that they can clear out their nasal passages which is gross but a thing that they need to do and um this works fine while they're bitty babies but I need I gotta find a different solution here soon something they can't also get into <laughs> But they're, they're quite fun. They poop a lot. And what I use in my brooder are puppy wee pads um, for the first bit, just because it's, like, really easy to clean up. And um, mostly for that reason, because it's really easy to clean up. <laughs> but, excuse me, when they get bigger and they get, you know, a little bit more poopier and probably stinkier, it may be a good idea. That's probably when I'll switch to... Hey. That's probably when I will switch to shavings because that helps also keep down the smells that they make. And like waterfowl are stinky. Stinky, dinky, stinky, stinky. <laughs> but yeah. Let's see. What else? We so our next. We got the, the new raised bed, you know, made. We filled it with donkey poo. Well, partially. We filled it about halfway with donkey poo. And the next step is to get some soil from in town from a bulk soil place because it's huge. It's a four by eight bed. And we filled, um, and it's 26 inches tall. And we filled that halfway up with donkey poo and uh, like wood and stuff like hugel culture. Um, the idea behind, or the premise of hugo culture and now we just gotta top it off with soil and i think it is now safe to plant my um i don't see in the near future a freezing evening or night i mean and so i can probably plant my little baby plant soon and i'll have to figure out where i'm gonna plant everything because um <laughs> Two beds. Most of my beds are rodent and bunny height. <laughs> and that's just like such a pain in the butt. But I was like, okay, well, I'll put like flowers in them. <sighs> Sorry. Or something. And I just like, I still haven't like decided where I'm going to plant everything. I think I have like, I have quite a few tomato plants. And Last year, I had my cherry tomato type plants. I had them on ground level, and I didn't really have an issue with rodents stealing them or eating them. But with my big tomatoes, like um, I had the black crim, um, they were in a raised bed, but it was climbable by stupid rodents. And they kept getting eaten, like bites, like half eaten, you know, bites taken out of it and everything. And I was so upset. And uh, actually, I think I have one of my first videos was about that. <clears throat> Sorry, I think, I think, yeah. And so hopefully I'll put the big tomatoes in the tall bed. Because that's why I made this bed. It's all metal on the outside. Fingers crossed that, you know, rodents can't climb up it. <laughs> Um, or else, you know, I'm packing it in and I'm freaking leaving. Like, I, psh, forget about it. I'd be done gardening if this doesn't work. <laughs> and I made sure, like, it's not close to a wall that rodents can climb up and, like, uh, jump in. It's uh, 40 inches away. They'll be 40 inches away from each other um, when I get more. So that should be fine. And overall... 
You've had an insect or worm eating on your tomatoes? Have you seen, have you searched them for tomato hornworms? <laughs> I have a video on that too. <laughs> We're getting into that time. But where, um, you know, I haven't quite been YouTubing for a year yet. I started my channel in August, like August 23rd. So I only have two months left of YouTubery before of my one year. And I still have, let's check. I'm getting closer, but I still need 1,000, like, 250 hours before monetization. And if you guys watch that video, it's kind of funny because, like, I'm, like, so weirded out by the tomato hornworms. And, um, yeah. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind linking that, it's literally one of the first videos, Emma. And also, um, the video, if, or if you're home now. Um, and then the video about, um... The brooder, the chicken brooder. But yeah, so um, if if that doesn't, if this new raised bed doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do at that point because like everything can climb, um, and and it just makes me feel like I have no hope <laughs> after that. I mean, thank goodness I don't deal with deer. Oh, okay. Um, thank goodness I don't deal with deer, but I think deer will be a lot easier to manage to keep out than rodents. Like, put up an eight-foot fence and you're fine. <laughs> with, with deer and with rodents, like, what are you going to do? There's not a whole lot. I mean, I know people are like, get a cat, but I don't want an outside cat because we live so close to the highway. And people have dropped cats off here. And they get hit on the highway every time. And, well, almost every time. Well, thanks, Emma. Um, and so that's that's the reason why I don't have an outside cat. They go often like 70 miles per hour on the road. It's only a two-lane highway, but it's really straight. And there's never any traffic. So people are going fast all the time. And so it's just not, I don't think it's, responsible of me to have an outdoor cat here even though I would love one it'd be so cool to to have a kitty that like follows you around everywhere <laughs> but no that's okay hopefully you know hopefully I'll make the baby geese friendly maybe they'll follow me everywhere I don't know <laughs> they've been They've been fun. It's been a long time since we had um, bitty babies in the house that I've had to brood. I think year before, well, was it last year? Last spring, I did some quail hatching underneath my bantam chickens, my uh, Belgian duclays. Um, and that was successful, but that was before my YouTuber -y. And uh, I had not been wanting to uh, do the brooding part of fowl <laughs> because it's kind of like a pain in the butt and just like one more thing to add to the list. But we really wanted to replace our geese. So this was kind of like, and I haven't been wanting to add more animals, but since we're replacing, it's okay. And because um, this isn't making our current work Aside from the brooding per portion, this won't make, so once they go outside, this won't make our current work outside, our daily current, um, any more difficult. This will be just, you know, putting a couple extra scoops of feed in instead. So um, adding more of the same type of animal is kind of okay, though I'm still working on not having more chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I thought more would die <laughs> because people's chickens are dying all the time. And I had, I had some deaths like the second year. And I think like the very beginning of the third year and now no one else has died. 
And I'm like kind of surprised. I, I mean, I'm happy they haven't, but because they're good, you know, they're fine chickens. It's just like, I don't know. I thought they would die. <laughs> Cause they're like reasons why someone asked me, well, my friend James asked me, uh, what did I name the geese? And I don't actually name my birds. Uh, you know, they sometimes acquire names like uh, Lady Chicken. Her name's Lady. And then because that one just, it just stuck with her. But no one else really has a name. There's a, I have a well summer and she always yells at me. So I call her Yelly the Welly. And um, the gander, Dan calls him something. Sometimes I think he calls him Gilbert. And then like another silly name that starts with a G. And then there's Q-Tip, the duck with the white poof. And then there's Gray Duck, which is, you know, really original. She's gray and a duck. And I guess we did name um, Donnie, Donnie the Drake. <laughs> and it, that name came about because for some reason, he I remembered, like, the movie Donnie Darko. And it's because he's dark in color, Donnie Darko. Anyway, so we don't really have a lot of names for the animals. And, and the reason why I didn't name them is because I was I didn't want to get more attached than I already would oh we did have we did have a rooster with the name his name was asshole because he was an asshole <laughs> he got me good in the leg I still have a scar you overbought two thinking you would lose more I know right so like I think the first year I had 24 chickens and then of course like a year or two in, I added uh, four more um, for a broody, broody hen. And then I didn't add any more last year, and I didn't add any more this year. And I still have a broody hen. She's a, I think she's a Moran mix. She lays a little bit dark eggs, but not like super dark. And, uh, She's a jerk, but I don't really like her. I never really liked her. <laughs> but I was like, I'm not getting you guys chicks. Although, like, I almost broke down and did. I still might. I don't know. You never know with me, but I'm really working on not having more chickens, even though it would be nice to have, like, a couple more every year. If, if more would die, <laughs> it would be more nice to have a couple more every year so that we'd have a little bit more eggs in the winter. But in the summer, we were, like, overrun with eggs, and we don't sell anymore. And, uh, and so it's always, like, a pain in the butt. Franklin D. Roaster. The other two are mean and were Stewie and Coco and no, they are in, and now they are freezer camp. Yeah. Um I had two I've had three, four roosters. Um the first two were um an Easter egger. He was all white. He was the one who got me good. His name was Asshole. And then I had a cross beak. He was major. His beak was like this. Not even joking. His beak was like this. Um, we just called him cross beak. Um, and he was a... What are the chickens you have, Emma? I can't remember the name. Your black and white lacy chickens. What are they? Wine dotes. <laughs> wine dots, wine dotes. So I had, um, and he was a wine dote. And he was fine. He was uh, he was actually like a really nice rooster. And we were like good friends until he started. They're yelling. <laughs> now they're, they're probably going to go nap. Let me put a mute on that. Um. And, but when he, <laughs> sorry, it's making me laugh. When he started um, having a harder time eating, he started getting like food aggressive, like a dog would, and like was like desperate to eat. And so that was the time when we decided to put him down. Um, the next rooster I had 
was uh, my Belgian Duclay, my, and he was so pretty, but he was a big jerk for being this big, you know? He was awful. He, like, scared me. I was like, I didn't want to get hurt again from a rooster. <laughs> uh, it's fine, Mia. Um, so he ended up going to freezer camp, and at the same time, I had a – a Jersey giant rooster. And the reason why we got rid of him. Oh, I've had five roosters. I forgot. Okay. So the reason why we got rid of him and my other rooster was it was the beginning of the pandemic and um, chicken feed was really hard to find. And we we're like, well, we're not hatching from our roosters. We're not hatching chickens or anything. And so we don't need the roosters. And I was actually really sad. So um, the other one was an Easter egg mix with Moran's, I believe. And he was pretty and he was nice. And I actually, I'm still a little bit sad <clears throat> about it um, because he was a good guy. But we didn't need him. And... He was kind of a jerk to the hens. Like, he would charge admission for them to get into the coop in the evening. And that was, like, traumatizing. Like, admission. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but we don't, because we're not hatching eggs, there's really no reason for us to have a rooster. I mean, I know that they, they have their place. And, but we don't, we, we haven't lost any chickens to predators. Um, they're contained in the hot wire chicken netting. And so far, so good. <laughs> I forgot about Donnie. Okay, it's not 10 birds. It was like three, four. But so it still counts because I have like, you know, like, 30 birds and only some of them have names like a handful <laughs> the quail aren't named and the bantam chickens aren't named there's one that i wanted to call rosie but i don't know which one she was they all look the same and uh and the ducks are a little easier to name so whatever i don't name them that well okay <laughs> so sorry um Tired and hungry. The barred rocks would meet with the hens and bite them and stomp on them afterwards. It is disturbing. <laughs> when I had two roosters, oh, I had a, a sixth rooster. Holy cannolis. So the first year I got this one bantam rooster. I can't remember. I think he was. No, I don't, I don't remember what he was, but he was little and black and he died like a couple months later. He had like, the vet said he had testicular cancer. <laughs> That's why he died. <laughs> it was like, okay, but he didn't have a name. I think he was a black Langshan. I'm not sure. A, a Bantam Langshan, I think. I can't really remember now, but he was okay. I forgot all about him because I didn't have him very long. You're walking around the yard so your chat gets behind. All right. Soon, next week, I need to work on inspecting the um, other colonies. <laughs> I was going to merge that drone lane queen colony with the new colony, but I think I'm just going to... I mean, this sounds kind of harsh, but if she's just laying drones, then uh, I don't really need her, and I don't really need to, like, to work on that colony. So I'll probably, like, cull her and then just dump out the colony and be, like, sorry, because there's not very many bees in there anymore. And then, so then I have uh, that tiny suckle, and then I have rose and clover. And hopefully Rose and Clover haven't decided to, like, swarm, even though I've split them. Um, Clover has the flow super on top, 
And last time I checked, they still haven't done anything. And it's possible that they're not going to do anything because we don't have a strong enough um, nectar flow. And what binge? You coming up? Come in. Come in. He's thinking about jumping up. Come in. There we go. He hasn't been on in a long time. Here's Mr. Binge. <laughs> so, um, Binge wants to meet the geese. Of course, we don't let him. I'm pretty sure he would eat them. And uh, so he's always, like, worried about the geese. <laughs> Too bad Mia couldn't be here. She always wanted to see Binge. Oh, you know what I did do? I packed up the prizes. By the way, I packed up the little propagation stations. I just haven't uh, been to town to mail them. Been in the town when, when I could mail them. Because so I ran to town yesterday. And I couldn't mail them because I was in a rush to get home with the baby geese. So, they'll be shipped sometime soon. <laughs> oh, Dan's getting off work, I think. So, I may go. We'll see when he comes out what he's doing. Um, but, yeah. So, I... Let's see. What else... I don't think we have anything else on our, like, major to-do list. <sighs> I don't think. Man, I hope I get some honey this year. I mean, like, I got those nine frames last year, but I, like, got too depressed to do anything about it, and I didn't extract them. Um, you're leaving to Wyoming for a week? <laughs> well... They'll hold it at your post office, though, right? Um, oh, so I haven't done anything with the honey. So hopefully I'll get some. Um, I also, on the clover colony, I was experimenting because I had those um, crystallized frames. And I put them... So I put on the flow super, and then I put an inner cover that has a hole on it. And then I put a super full of the crystallized honey frames. And I was hoping, I was hoping that they would rob out those frames. But I don't think they are. So I'm not really sure what to do with them. Um, well, I could leave them in hives over the winter. Oh, are you all done? Oh, I thought Dan came out. Not quite. Are you done? Dan, I'm asking a question. Are you done? No. Working? No? Okay. <laughs> God. <laughs> but I guess I don't really like have a whole lot to talk about. Um I think I might go. So I appreciate you guys for taking a few minutes out of your day to day to hang out with me here on farmstead smith i think i might try to do um this the bitty baby geese they're kind of fun maybe i'll do like some little lives with them or something someone said maybe do a, like a long time live with them i don't know how well that would work out maybe it would be okay they poop a lot which is kind of like a little disturbing but but yeah so um we'll see how that goes i don't know i don't know when a good time of day would be for that so all right well i will talk to you guys later have a great weekend i'll see you next time